Welcome back to the final round here on Yahoo Finance. I'm Shauna Smith. We have just around 45 seconds left in the trading day and stocks are mixed. We have the Dow off its lows of the day right now, off just around 70 points. S&P and NASDAQ both holding on to gains with the S&P up just around three tenths of a percent and the NASDAQ up just around three quarters of a percent. Taking a look at some of the action that we're seeing within the major indexes today, the laggards when it comes to the Dow, some interesting notes here, Exxon, Boeing and Raytheon Technologies are amongst the worst performers. Exxon stock off just around 3% today, Boeing off just around 2% and Raytheon Technologies off just around 1.5%. That does it for the trading day today. Again, the Dow only major average in the red, off just around two tenths of a percent. S&P and Nasdaq, though, holding on to gains. I mentioned some of those losers in the Dow, and it's important to point out some of the big changes that we got after the bell yesterday, shortly after this show wrapped up, when it comes to the Dow Jones industrial average. Exxon, Pfizer, and Raytheon Technologies, those three stocks are going to be taken out of the Dow. Salesforce, Amgen, and Honeywell are now in. So Exxon and Raytheon Technologies Amongst the worst performers in the Dow today, Pfizer also under a bit of pressure. Then on the other hand, Salesforce, Amgen, and Honeywell, all three of those stocks closing in the green today. Some of the broader action that we're seeing in the market sector-wise, communication services amongst the top performers, consumer discretionary and healthcare leading the way. The laggards, energy moving to the downside, as well as materials, industrials, and utilities. We also got some mixed data here on the econ front. And it's interesting here when we point out some of the trends that we're seeing. So new home sales surging to the highest level since 2006 on the heels of some of that better than expected housing data that we got out last week. And then on the other side of things, the U.S. consumer confidence falling for the second month in a row in the month of August. And this, of course, comes as many more Americans get a little bit more concerned about the economic outlook. But again, Wall Street and Main Street, two totally different pictures as we have stocks just near all-time highs of the NASDAQ up just four straight record closes in a row. But again, the picture here on Main Street looking very different than what we're seeing reflected in the stock market once again today. Well, I want to bring in my co-host for the next hour. We have Miles Udlin along with Rick Newman, Akiko Fujita, and Jared Blickery with us. And Miles, I mean, what's your big takeaway from the action today? Because you take a look at the broader uh, averages, NASDAQ up a record close for four days in a row, Dow under a bit of pressure, and then the econ data very mixed. Yeah, I mean, I think um, all of that is kind of like, yeah, that's that's sort of been the story, right, for, for some time. And I think going back to, um, you know, your, your mention at the top about the Dow reshuffle, I think I think it's interesting to to kind of dwell on this for a point. I think it's worth you know, discussing because um, the significance of Exxon, a company that seven years ago was the world's largest company, now coming out of an index that it's been a member of for 88 years to be replaced by Salesforce, a company that I think a lot of us jokingly, but also seriously would say, now, what exactly does Salesforce do? Um, I know that they make a lot of money and they buy a lot of companies and their stock only goes up. But I think it's a, it's a pure B2B play and it speaks to where the economy is headed. If data is the new oil, right? Well, then Salesforce has all the data and Exxon has the literal oil and there's not as much value in that anymore. And I think while these are symbolic and, um, and you know, Howard Silverblatt, we had him on last hour, he said the Dow is, is a social construct. And I, I think it's important to remember that um, that is worth something, even if the price weighting of the index is is kind of silly and doesn't exactly uh, work great. And I think if we try to look at, you know, what's the story of today's market? Well, that shuffle we saw, um, because, you know, the Honeywell for Raytheon swap, that's a one for one. Amgen for Pfizer, maybe you say biotech versus traditional pharma, where things are going. But those are kind of one for one swaps. The Salesforce for Exxon, I think, is a, a as good a symbolic move as any to explain what's happened in the last six months. And obviously, some of the details will change along that time. But every day, it feels like we come on here and we say, well, the economy is not doing so great, but stocks went up. And, and I feel like that shift can, can be kind of fit into a narrative of it kind of explains everything, right? It certainly does. I mean, it really just highlights the fact that 
it's just a sign of how times have changed when you talk about the fact that Salesforce is now included in the Dow. We don't have Exxon any longer included in that major average. And then also it's important to point out that the reason why we're seeing all these changes here is because of Apple's four for one stock split. And that's something that Howard Silverblatt really emphasized last hour for us. But Jared, I'm curious just to get your reaction to some of the moves that we saw today in NASDAQ up four record highs in a row. S&P, it's its third record close in a row, pushing further above 3,400. Hey, right now we're not too far from 3,500. So maybe it's not, we won't have to wait as long as maybe we initially thought here to reach that next milestone. No, and there's lots of milestones to look at and each market, each index is a little bit different. Let's look at the Dow here. This is today's price action on the Wi-Fi Interactive. And right on the open, we hit this high around 28,400 28, or thereabouts. And this corresponds to this gap right in here, right before the sell-off. And the S&P 500 did a very similar thing uh, about a week or two ago. And we'll just see that here. We have this gap and it's actually several weeks ago, and was able to climb above it and uh, reach new highs. And I don't see why the Dow won't be able to do the same thing. Do we take a little bit of a stumble first? That's a big question. Uh, we were talking to Liz Ann Saunders in the last hour, and she raised a very important point that the advanced decline line for the New York Stock Exchange and the S&P 500 have been rolling over. So you wanna see them make new highs, these indicators showing broad participation when the index is making new highs and we don't have that confirmation yet. It can take a week or two, but you do want to see that. Otherwise, the market tends to roll over. We also have a little bit less momentum this time of breaking through these highs than we did in other spurts up. And that sets up a negative potential divergence. So we're watching that. And then we got the VIX here. Uh, the VIX is at low levels, but it looks like it kind of wants to spike. It could easily go down and trend down for several weeks, even another month or two. But right now, 20 is a barrier. So we'll have to monitor that as well. And then we got the 10-year T-note yield. That is up four basis points. Doesn't look like a lot here. But when you take a look at a shorter term chart, here's a two-month chart. You can see uh, it really does want to go higher. And a lot of times when we see a movement in any kind of market where it breaks to new highs and it come back, comes back and it uh, tends to chop around for a while, when we do break this range, whether to the upside or the downside, expect to get some continuation. Uh, let's take a look at our canary. We already took a look at the NASDAQ last hour. We'll take a look at the leading markets. And it's instructive what is leading today. We got IPO, that's the Renaissance IPO ETF with the same ticker IPO. Uh, shows a, a lot of risk taking here. KWeb, that's a Chinese internet ETF. Uh, we saw China stocks surging today. And then also biotech followed by the chip stocks, IGV is tech software, emerging markets. Uh, all of these point to uh, growth stocks, and that's very interesting when you consider that we saw the 10-year rise today. Usually we see value and cyclical outperform. Even though they did early on in the session, they gave up those gains and were underperformers the rest of the days. So to the downside, we have XHB, that's a home builders ETF. Not surprising as we're seeing rates rise. And then XRT is that retail ETF. So kind of a mixed picture today, but uh, we'll see what happens for the rest of the week here, Sean. 